Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Now we have a very good understanding of a binary classifier. We have also studied how do we evaluate the performance of a binary classifier. In this short video, we will talk about multi-class classification. So we will extend the concept of a binary classifier uh, for a multi-class problem. And we will also talk about uh, how do we evaluate uh, the performance of a multi-class classifier. Okay, let's begin. So uh, that's how we formulated our uh, classification problem in which we have x1, x2, xn as uh, input data points uh, and each of x belongs to the d-dimensional feature space and each of this y, y1, y2, yn, uh, so they are, they are scalars right? or they, they represent class for a classification problem. So this set y, so each of this y belongs to this set y. So if this y can only has two values, if the cardinality of this y is two, we say we have a binary classification problem. Y can take zero or one, y can take minus one or one. This is what we had a binary classification problem. In multi-class classification, so this y can take a, a lot more values than two. Uh, or we can say uh, this y has m number of classes. So this is, uh, we, we, we can say we have m class classification. And we encounter this m class classification uh, in everyday life as well. Uh, for example, a simple classification problem or a simple multi-class classification problem would be emotion detection. So we can have different emotions, right? So we can have anger or, or uh, you can be sad or you can be happy, right? So there are, there are different uh, uh, types of emotions. So given a photo and you want to find out the emotion from the photo. So this is uh, M, it's a multi-class classification problem. Uh, another example could be a vehicle type, uh, make, model or color. Uh, so you're getting a stream of the camera uh, mounted on a highway or uh, on a road and you're getting continuous stream from the camera and you want to find out, you want to detect whether there's a vehicle or not. So after detection, you want to find vehicle type, uh, make, model, or color. These are all multi-class classification problems. Or another example could be you're getting, you're, you're, you have a speech signal and you identify speaker. Okay, if you want to find out gender of from the speech signal, that is a binary classification problem. Uh, if, if you want to identify speaker from the speech signal, this is an M class classification problem. Another example could be, uh, you're given, you have sensors mounted on the machine and from the measurement of those sensors, you want to find out whether the machine is in the normal state, whether the machine is in the rest state, or, uh, or it is or going from rest state to the, uh, to the non normal operation state or from normal operation state to ramping down to the zero state. This could be another type of uh, multi-class classification. Or you can have sentiment analysis uh, or text analysis. Uh, so again, this is multi and class classification. Uh, or it could be to take an image of the sky and determine the pollution level, right? it's, whether it is healthy, it's moderate or it's hazard. So it's, we can say this is a three class classification problem. In fact, uh, this was a paper uh, published, uh, I think in ICAST 2018. So uh, they have developed an application which uh, you just take a photo from your smartphone. Uh, you go out and take a photo from the smartphone and that, that application can determine uh, the air pollution level. Um, Another example could be, uh, this is what we do in our lab. Uh, so we record home Wi-Fi signals and we want to identify the type of appliance being operated. So you have a device that can hear, that can uh, receive Wi-Fi signals. And from the signature of Wi-Fi signals, from the shape of Wi-Fi signal, from the strength of the Wi-Fi signal, you can determine whether the microwave is on in this room or whether the fridge is on in this room or not. Again, this is, this is something uh, uh, non-trivial, okay? 
Okay, so that was all about the formulation of multi-class classification. Now let's talk about how do we implement multi-class classification prop? How, how do we build a multi-class classifier? What we have, we have a binary classifier. We will learn how can we use a binary classifier? How can we use it to, to develop or uh, to implement a multi-class classifier? let's talk about implementation of a multi-class classification or a multi-class classifier. Right? So uh, there are different options uh, proposed in the literature. I will talk about two options right? uh, which are very commonly used and you can find any, any textbook on machine learning. The option one could be um, build a one versus all. Uh, it's also called one versus rest classifier. Right? So this is a uh, this is how can we use a binary classifier to implement a multi-class classifier. Okay, in this option or in this OVA or OVR classifier, we train M different binary classifiers. As the name suggests, it is one versus all or it's one versus rest. Okay. So you, you take M classifiers and each of this classifier uh, for example, classifier HI. So you train it to classify if X belongs to ith class or not. So HI hypothesis function, a classifier can, de can determine whether this test point belongs to ith class or versus all of the other classes versus the rest of the classes. That is a uh, classifier HI. So HI is a binary classifier. And uh, how do you use it? For a new test point Z, so you get scores for each classifier, right? So, uh, and what I'm saying is this SI is not a class, right? So I'm, this SI is a score. That is, uh, uh, your, your classifier is predicting that whether Z belongs to IF class or not. Uh, this could be uh, a probability uh, that Z test point belongs to class I or not. Okay. So you take a test point Z, you give to H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and so on and so forth, and you calculate scores for each classifier. Right? So score for classifier one tells you whether, okay, if the score is probability, this probability tells you whether this test point belongs to classifier one or not. Score for classifier two tells you whether uh, this test point belongs to class two or not, and so on and so forth. So if we give you this scores, and I ask you to find out whether uh, what is the actual label for a given test point, or what label would you assign to this test point? You would say, I will assign the label, which, okay, I would assign the label of the class for which we have the highest score or maximum score, right? So we predict the label Y hat as, yeah, you take a maximum over all the scores and you return this index I, right, this Y hat, okay? So this is a, a very, very simple approach. You have a binary classifier, you build M classifiers, you compute score for each, each binary classifier, and you check a maximum of all the scores, you, you get a label. You have a multi-class classifier. Okay. So this one versus all and one versus rest approach is commonly used for algorithms that naturally predict uh, some numerical uh, probability or some numerical score uh, for each test point. And we will talk about uh, the, the two types of class, such classifiers, uh, logistic regression and perceptron based classifier. So each of these classifiers, so they, they assign some, some score or some probability for every test point, right? So in fact, when you implement, uh, when, you, when you see the implementation of the N class classifier in the scikit-learn library, so that library implements OVR, uh, so using these algorithms for, using this uh, OVA or OVR method uh, for multi-class classification. Okay, so what, what other options do we have? Right. 
So one commonly used is uh, build an all versus all classifier. Right? As the name suggests, you want to compare, you want to use a binary classifier and you want to build all versus all classifier. It means you want to, you in a binary classifier, you want to predict whether this test point belongs to one or two, one or three, one or four, one or five, and so on and so forth, right? So in this all versus all classifier, we need and choose two different binary classifiers, right? And each classifier is of the form H, I, J, right? Why do we have two indices? Because we want to compare every test point and we want to differentiate whether this point belongs to one or two, one or three, or two or three. So we need two indices. And we can say classifier H, I, J, we train it to classify if X belongs to ith class or jth class, right? Okay, now you get a new test point. Uh, you, you get scores for each classifier, right? In this case, scoring could be very simple, right? If your classifier tells you that whether I belong, whether this test point Z belongs to class I, you assign a score one, or if Z is likely class J, you assign a score zero. Right, so you can have this hard thresholding. And now you want to assign a true label, right? And very, very simple would be, you predict the label Y that has been predicted multiple times. For example, if your test point belongs to third class, right? you compare third with one, you will get a label, you will get one. Third with two, you get a label of one. Third with three, so third with four, you get a label of one and so on and so forth. So you predict the label that has been predicted multiple times out of these M choose two classifiers. So these are just the two options uh, just to inform you or just to give you uh, an idea how do we implement M class classifier, M class classifier using a binary classifier. And obviously uh, there can be other options. Uh, we, we can implement multiple ways. Okay, uh, now we move towards how do we evaluate the performance of a multi-class classifier. We know how to implement a multi-class classifier using a binary classifier. We know how do we evaluate performance of a binary classifier, but how do we evaluate the performance? What do we mean by precision and recall and uh, specificity? Uh, for a multi-class classifier. How do we define these measures for a multi-class classifier? Let's answer these questions. Right? We will use, we will talk about two approaches, uh, a, a macro averaging approach and micro averaging approach. In macro averaging, we compute performance for each class and then we take an average to find uh, average precision or uh, a macro average recall or macro average specificity. In micro-averaging, we compute the confusion matrix of, after collecting decisions for all classes, and then we evaluate uh, either precision or recall or some other metric. Okay, let's talk about uh, in more detail, uh, and then you will have a better understanding of macro-averaging and micro-averaging. Let's start with the confusion matrix first. So again, we take uh, same example, that we want to predict if a baller will ball or no ball, white ball or a regular ball. We assume that we have 15 no balls, 20 white balls in an inning of 300 balls. So in total, uh, we have 335 balls. And uh, we want, we have a model that can classify whether a baller will going to ball a no ball or a white ball or a regular ball. And assume that you have a, a reasonably accurate model. Uh, these are the predictions of the model summarized in the form of confusion matrix. How do you interpret this? So what do we mean by eight here? Okay, first of all, unlike binary classification, there are no positive or negative classes here, right? So at first, it might be a little difficult to find true positive, uh, true negative, false positive, or false false negative. 
since there are no positive or negative classes. But we will see it's actually pretty straightforward. What we have to do here is to find true positive, true negative, false positive and false negative for each individual class. For example, if we take class no ball, then let's see what are the values of the metric from the confusion matrix. Okay, for no ball, what is the interpretation of this eight? So out of 15 no balls, 15 out of 15 no balls, eight no balls have been predicted correctly. The two no balls have been predicted as white balls and the five no balls, the rest of the no balls have been predicted as regular balls, right? Similarly, uh, this 20 here. So out of 300 regular balls, 200 balls have been predicted as no ball by your classifier. Okay. How can we compute recall here? So if you uh, uh, try to recall the definition of recall, so that is you take how many no balls have been corrected as no balls divided by the total number of balls that that were label that had the gold label of no balls. Right. You can say recall here would be simply eight divided by sum of eight, two, and five. Similarly, recall for white ball would be 10 divided by 10 plus five plus five and so on and so forth. So recall for no ball, white ball, regular ball. So you would have three recalls, right? each for individual class. So for uh, no ball, recall would be eight over eight plus two plus five. And similarly for white ball, it is 10 over uh, five plus 10 plus 10, five. Okay. How do you compute precision? Right. So for a no ball, you simply divide, you simply take eight and divide by eight plus five plus 20 and so on and so forth. So this would be the precision uh, for a three class classifier. Right? So we have a confusion matrix. There's no uh, concept of uh, true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, uh, because uh, we have, we have, we don't have positive and negative here. Right? So, uh, but we can compute recall and precision for each of the classes. But how can we combine these three different recalls to, to, form, to find out one recall, one value of recall, or how can we combine these three precision values to, to find out one value of precision? So to combine these different values for each class here, for, in, for individual classes, we'll talk about two of the approaches, uh, macro averaging and macro averaging. Okay, let's talk about, uh, okay, before we talk about uh, these macro, micro averaging, macro averaging, we can generalize uh, this, uh, this concept of recall and precision. So here we had three classes and we had three recalls, right? So if we have say M number of classes, how do we define recall and precision for M classes? And so we take Cij uh, as a quantity that represents the entry of the confusion matrix at ith row and jth column. If you have a M class classification problem, the size of confusion matrix would be M times M, right? If we ask you to find recall for ith class, and if you follow the definition in which we have just developed, how do you find recall for ith class? For example, if you take i is equal to two and, and you take white ball, for white ball class, recall would be 10 over, you take this diagonal quantity 10 and divide by the sum of all the quantities in, in the column. Or we can say recall for the i class will be given by recall subscript i, so the diagonal entry at ith row and ith column divided by the sum of the entries. Here you see sum is over rows. So, uh, so J is fixed here. Uh, ideally, I, I could have written, uh, I think this is a bit abuse of notation. I will correct it in the notes, which should be 
C I I divided by is sum over C J I I is equal to one to M. Uh, because, sorry, J is equal to one to M because I'm using I as uh, my output variable. I should I shouldn't have used I in the in the summation. So this is the right thing. So the idea is to sum along uh, all the rows and you keep the column fixed. Now similarly, when you talk about precision, uh, for I class precision would be simply you take a diagonal quantity and you divide by all the uh, quantities in, in, in that row, in the ith row, right? So precision I would be CII, again, uh, CIJ, where you sum from J is equal to one to M, you sum over the rows. Okay. Uh, in fact, we can define accuracy uh, by using this notation. So what is accuracy? So how many no balls have been predicted accurately? How many white balls have been predicted accurately? How many regular balls have been predicted accurately? So you sum all the diagonal terms, right? And uh, that will give you accuracy. So the sum of diagonal terms, divided by the total number of data points you have in your data set. So I is equal to one to M and J is equal to one to M. Okay. So that's how we can compute recall for each class, precision for each class and one accuracy uh, for the whole classifier. Okay, let's combine uh, recalls for different classes and precision for different classes and find one value of recall or one value of the metric. Uh, using the concept of uh, macro averaging or micro averaging. First, let's talk about what do we mean by macro averaging. Again, we stick to the example and uh, macro averaging simply that we, we compute performance for each class and then we take an average. Say, you if you have four classes, you compute four recalls and you take an average of, of the four recalls. Right? So this is, uh, a simple interpretation of macro averaging. Okay, if we give you uh, this confusion matrix, so we have three classes and we will learn how do we compute a confusion matrix for each class. Because for, if you have a binary classifier problem, so one versus rest, one versus all, that means you can you can define true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. So we will, can, we will form confusion matrix for each class and from each class, we will compute recall for each class. Uh, and then we will take average of all the recalls or precision to find one single metric. Okay, let's talk about the confusion matrix for each class first. So this is the confusion matrix uh, for a no ball class. So no ball versus not a no ball, right? How did I construct this? So it's super simple. So this eight is coming here, right? Uh, what about true negative? That is not a no ball. How many balls have not been predicted as no, not no balls? Uh, to 70, obviously, this 10, yes. And also this, that has been predicted as a white ball and also this quantity. This is predicted as a regular ball. So these balls were not no balls and these have been predicted as not no ball. Okay. So if you sum these four, 270 plus 10 plus 10 plus five, you get 295, right? The sum of these four is appearing here. Mm -hmm. What about false positive? So this 20 and five, 25, false positive. And similarly, false negative is a sum of two and five. So it should be coming from here. Great. Uh, if I asked you to construct a confusion matrix for a white ball, uh, maybe you take a pause here and, and try to construct uh, a confusion matrix for a white ball. So assume this is what you get. So how did I get this? So again, this 10 is 
here, right? And how do you get 203? Right? So 270 plus 20 plus 8 and plus 5. So these four corner entries. So the label is not a white ball and they have not been printed as white balls. They're too negative. So, so all of these, some of these two you get four. Okay. And so on and so forth. Similarly, you can construct a confusion matrix for uh, a regular ball, not regular ball. Right. So we have compute confusion matrix for each class. And now for each class, we can compute the matrix. We can compute recall, we can compute precision, we can compute specificity, and so on and so forth. Right? We can have different metrics. So for example, if I compute recall, so recall uh, for no wall would be 8 over 8 plus 7, where 0.53, 10 over 20.5, and uh, 270 over 300.9. So you get three values of recalls. And but I want one value of recall. Now I can take an average. So you first compute for each class and you take an average. And this is what you get is macro average recall. Similarly, you can have a macro average precision or macro average specificity. So you simply take an average of these three values, 0 0.53 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9 is divided by three, you get 0.64, okay? So I assume now you have a good understanding of what you mean by macro averaging. You can create performance for each class and then you take an average. Okay, let's talk about micro averaging. In micro averaging, we compute confusion matrix first. So we have we have these decisions for each class, right? So previously, for each of these classes, we can put a recall and we take an average of value of recall. This is macro averaging. In micro averaging, so we're using the, this data for each class, we first construct a confusion matrix, right? So we collect all the decisions from all classes first in the, in the form of confusion matrix, and then we will evaluate uh, the value of either recall or precision. Okay? So this is what we call micro averaging. Okay, let's construct confusion matrix uh, when we talk about macro averaging. Okay, I'll be using these three uh, confusion matrices uh, for each of the class. And I define true, false, right? So again, true is positive, or you can say false is negative, or negative or true is positive, right? Okay, let me explain how did I construct this matrix. Okay. So 288, that is simply a sum of all of these. Right, so 288 uh, is equal to 270 plus 10 plus 8. What did you get? Similarly, this 47 would be 7 plus 10 plus 30. And this 47 would be 10 plus 12 plus 25. And 623 would be 295 plus 303. This is the sum of all these uh, confusion matrix for each class. And you form uh, a confusion matrix for uh, a multi class classifier. So now we have a very simple confusion matrix. Uh, if you simply use the same interpretation of true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, you can compute recall. What's recall in this case? 288 divided by 288 plus 47. So recall would be 0.86. Right? So this is a micro average recall. Previously we had a macro average recall. The only difference is if I use this information, right, what I have here, here, and here, and I compute recall for each class, I take an average, a simple average would give me macro average recall or macro average metric. If I combine these information first in the form of confusion matrix and then evaluate, this is micro averaging. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you have a good understanding of uh, the difference between micro averaging and macro averaging. Macro and micro. Okay, just summary of uh, micro averaging versus macro averaging. So if you see, 
uh, oh, you have not seen. Uh, note micro average recall is equal to micro average precision is equal to F1 score. In fact, that is equal to accuracy, right? So when you have, um, when, you, when you determine micro average, so what you get is a kind of a global metric, right? Because uh, when you do micro averaging, uh, the value of recall is equal to precision is equal to F1 score. Obviously when recall is equal to precision, you get the same value of F1 score. And that is in fact equal to accuracy. Right? And you can check this. If I give you this, what is precision here? 47 divided by 47 plus 288. You get exactly the same value. Right? You can also check accuracy. Okay. But you must convert accuracy uh, from the confined matrix, from the original confined matrix, uh, three by three. And uh, therefore, the micro average is called a global metric. And uh, consequently, uh, due to the same reason, uh, why, why, do, why don't we use accuracy? Uh, micro averaging is not a good measure when classes are skewed or when classes are imbalanced. Uh, in such a case, macro averaging or macro average uh, precision recall. So they give you better uh, metric. They serve as better metric because when you're using macro averaging, so you you first get a zoomed in picture of each class, right? So you get a recall for each class. You compute precision for each class. So you have the information for each of the classes. And then you combine, you take an average uh, or you combine these uh, different values to form a single value of recall or a single value of the metric. And finally, we note that the macro averaging does not take into account uh, the class imbalance or class skew either. Right? Because you are computing average for each class, you can put a recall for each class and you then take an average. Right? You have not taken into account whether this class had uh, uh, more data points than this class. Okay, and the solution is weighted averaging. Uh, in macro averaging, uh, we took a simple average, right? But instead of taking a simple average, if we take a weighted average in which you use weights uh, as the number of uh, points, number of data points of each class, that would be a weighted averaging. And uh, for the example under consideration, if I compute weighted average recall, uh, so I had 15 uh, no balls, 20 regular balls, 20 white balls, and 300 regular balls. And if I use these weights in computing the average uh, value of recall, uh, I get uh, this point here six. If you see, this is in fact exactly micro average precision, micro average recall, micro average accuracy, or F1 score. Uh, and Again, you end up with a global metric, right? You end up with a one metric uh, that is uh, that is uh, accuracy for the whole classifier. But before computing this average, before computing this weighted average, you have already taken into account, you, have, you already had the information about the behavior of classifier or the performance of classifier for each class. You know 0.53 uh, performance is recall for no balls. 0.50 is the value of recall for white balls and 0 0.90 for the regular balls. Okay, so you already had zoomed information about the classes. Okay, uh, I think we stop here. Um, enough uh, with the classification for now. From next video, we will move towards regression and we will spend uh, a couple of weeks on regression. And we will come, we will then we will revisit uh, this multi class classification or binary classification. Um, again. Okay, we will stop here and see you in the next video, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.